it is a very tough thing to go through. It's like his mind is all disorganized and he's seeking these things to regulate himself. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. I am in a bit of a different setting. I've just put the kids to bed So I don't want to be too loud over that way. I have been on my own with the kids for three days So I really haven't had the chance to film videos It's been quite an exhausting couple of days, but he comes back tomorrow. So I'm very excited <laughs> So yeah, this video is going to be talking about Jacob's recent diagnosis of sensory processing disorder Now I've only like vaguely heard of this term before um, he was diagnosed with it. I had not heard anything about it, I've just heard the name before. And it's actually not very well known across the board, but there are so many children who have sensory processing disorder, or so many people in general who have sensory processing disorder. I just wanted to make this video to create awareness, I guess, um, and tell you my story, or Jacob's story, and yeah, how it's affecting his life and what we're doing to um, help him and support him with his sensory difficulties. So back in February, we went to get a speech therapy assessment done because um, Jacob wasn't communicating, he wasn't speaking, and he still isn't. This speech therapist could give an answer as to why Jacob was doing the things he was doing in addition to not talking. It was kind of eye-opening, like the whole time I was like, oh yeah, he does this, and she's like, yeah, that's because of this. And it was just like, it all makes sense now. <laughs> so let me give you a definition of what sensory processing disorder is, like the official one. It says, sensory processing disorder is a condition in which the brain has trouble receiving and responding to information that comes in through the senses. <laughs> and I know I'm reading this from the computer, sorry. It's a neurological condition that exists when the sensory signals don't get organized into appropriate responses. So hearing, vision, taste, smell, touch, pressure and movement. So people with sensory processing disorder either feel sensory input more or they feel it less. So that's, they often call them seekers or avoiders. So basically, uh, to put it in easier terms, the brain receives information from our senses, uh, typically, it processes and interprets the information it receives and then the person responds to the sensor, sensory input and makes appropriate responses to perform skills required. So they can either have hypersensitivities to sensory input or they can have hyposensitivities to sensory input or they could have both which is what Jacob has. He has um, some avoidance and some seeking behavior behaviors. So I know I realize I have the computer right here, but I have Jacob's report from the speech therapist, which um, kind of gives a lot of information as to why Jacob does what he does. So I'm going to go through a few things that he does and just explain them a little bit. So when the speech therapist was talking about auditory processing, it, she explained it as if that Jacob can't sort of focus on one sound if there's lots of different sounds going on around himself. So he'll get very overwhelmed and that is why he isn't able to basically learn how to talk and learn how to communicate because he's got all these things going on in his head and he cannot um, organize them and focus in on the one one person talking or the one person that he's focusing on. So um, in that way, it explains a lot because Jacob doesn't respond to his name. He doesn't respond to any instructions. Um, he sort of just seems like he's in his own world. Whilst that is kind of a sign of autism, um, this kind of explains it that he can't sort of tune out the outside noises. And that is why I have implemented the white noise machine in his room um, while he's sleeping because that allows him to block out all those additional noises so that he can calm himself down and go to sleep. So the next one is visual processing. Jacob does get very overwhelmed with his visual environment. So if something does get too much, Jacob will close his eyes 
um, he sort of like closed his eyes and like walk around even, which scares the daylight, living daylight out of me, but um, he'll close his eyes or he'll um, lie on the ground and bury his face into his uh, soft toy, um, just sort of shutting off that visual stimulation because it has gotten too much for him. Jacob! Cheese! We have noticed that Jacob um, doesn't like to use too much eye contact, although he's getting better at that. And faces seem to be too overwhelming for him. Um, just the other day, I was lying on the couch and I kind of closed my eyes for a little bit. And he came over and kissed me. And I haven't received a kiss from Jacob for many, many months. Like, it's been a while. <laughs> so excited but we realized that maybe eyes are too much for him and we have realized that when Jazz is not looking at him he will go closer to her and sort of touch her maybe a little bit um, so definitely that face to face um, is too overwhelming for him so the next one is tactile processing so that's the touch so Jacob does tend to hold on to objects and items very like so he holds lots of items very most for most of the day. And he's happy with, like this kind of regulates himself to like calm down. Yeah, he's much happier when he's holding his items. So his teddy bear, his bottle. It used to be his dummy, but he doesn't have that in the daytime anymore. But now he loves holding coins or counters. But um, in the other sense, if the tactile input is imposed on Jacob, he does not like it. So if someone comes up to him and tries to hug him, kiss him out of his control, it's, he does not like it. He'll push away, he'll run away. Yeah, anything that's kind of imposed on him, so touch-wise, so he doesn't like um, when we pour the water over his head or when we wash his hair, wash his body, um, he doesn't like to brush his teeth, things like that. Things that are imposed on him, we are trying very hard to get Jacob to do those things himself so that he can be in control and he likes that aspect. Vestibular processing, um, this is the movement sense. And for Jacob, Jacob seeks out movement. So he is constantly running, running, jumping, spinning, running in circles. Mm -hmm. Um, he is constantly seeking that sense so he will go outside and he will run from one side of the deck to the other side of the deck so many times if he sees an item on the floor he'll run around it in circles and he never seems to get tired but when he does do these activities it does kind of overwhelm him so as much as we want him to get these activities like out of his system if that makes any sense they also do overstimulate him too much so we don't we try not to do them right before bedtime or right before nap time but we do let him do it um, for majority of the day so the next sense is proprioceptive which is the body awareness. The big one for Jacob is he seeks out deep pressure a lot. He is constantly running up behind us and if I'm leaning back on something he wants to be in between us like he wants to be like sort of sandwiched in really or he'll come up behind us and give us big bear hugs. Um, he always wants to be held and the reason for that is because he wants that tight pressure like to regulate himself. So we have gotten Jacob compression clothes. Um, these clothes, I'll put a picture up here. These clothes, um, they're kind of like skins I guess but they're very um, tight and um, he's loving them. Like they've changed his behavior so much like it, it's just kind of like he's wearing a hug the whole time so if he doesn't get that um, deep pressure like we often massage him like 
squeeze him a little bit and not squeeze like hard but you know squeeze him and let go squeeze him and let go and he constantly is pushing his feet up against us to get that massage done taste or the oral input um, is a big one as well for jacob he loves the bottle and he loves the dummy so the dummy was a big one we were considering taking the dummy away from him and we did for a couple of weeks um, but he just didn't sleep well and until we find something that can replace that um, input for him um, we can't take that away from him at night time so um, that is why he likes to basically suck his bottle and suck his dummy because it gives him that regulation you'll often see Jacob shoveling food into his mouth and that is a big one as well for the oral input um, so like he stuffs like bananas in his mouth like he can put the whole thing in his mouth and um, that's just to feel so that he can feel the whole of his mouth essentially so foods of a softer consistency he kind of tends to like scoff down but things that are like crunchy he will eat slowly so because of all these difficulties Jacob is having with his sensory input, it is displaying lots of behavior, behavioral issues like screaming and him getting frustrated because he can't communicate with us. So Jacob does cry a lot, he does scream a lot, he does have meltdowns. These meltdowns are quite intense. I thought that they were just typical tantrums until they just started getting worse. Jacob started to hit his head on the wall, started hitting his hand on his head. He screams for about an hour until he starts to calm down. If there is anything wrong, he's trying to tell us what's going wrong and if we can't figure that out, it's very hot. He's just screaming and crying. He's pushing us away and pulling us in again. It is a very tough thing to go through. If you've gotten this far in the video, comment down below a love heart and um, I'd love to see who's gotten this far in the video. So basically, I didn't really know how I wanted to approach this video. I pretty much just told you how sensory processing disorder is affecting Jacob's life. And what I've covered today isn't isn't even probably half of what happens to Jacob. There are a lot, a lot more things that go on for Jacob. Um, things that I can think of at the top of my head is that he likes to be in prams, that like that enclosed feeling like that deep pressure thing. He sleeps in a tent because he likes that enclosed nature. He often will um, just look down at his hands, he'll put his hands there and he'll look at his hands. That's to close off the visual stimulation. He likes to climb up to high places. We thought that was a normal toddler behavior, but it actually got to the point where he needed to be up on those tall places. So he likes to climb up onto our dining table, which we have allowed now because he is very safe when he does it and we're always with him. I'm trying to explain it like, it's like his mind is all disorganized and he's seeking these things to regulate himself. And if he doesn't get those things, he can't regulate his thoughts. So he's going all disorganized or on the other hand, if things are too imposed on him, he's too disorganized and that is a big thing for him as well. When things are imposed on Jacob, he doesn't deal well. The other day we went to a restaurant and just there was bright lights, there was lots of noise, it was hot, so lots of sensory input was imposed on him and he just wanted to get out of there. Like we went to a birthday party and again, too many people, it's just too overwhelming for him. He just wanted to get out of there. So we do have to be mindful of this in the future. He is not just acting up, he is actually trying to get organized in his mind. He's trying to regulate himself and he's having very severe difficulties doing so. I've started reading this book, it's called The Out of Sync Child. Again, I haven't got very much time to do it, but it is starting off to be a really good book and I've heard great recommendations to read this book um, if you have a child with SPD. If you have a child with SPD and you've clicked on my video, I would love for you to subscribe and continue this journey with us. Comment down below. I'd love to chat to anyone who is a parent of a child with SPD or is even a person with SPD themselves. I'd love to connect with you, hear your story, and see how I can help Jacob more. We're very new to this community. 
yeah, I'd love to hear your stories. The next video that I put out is going to be a um, sensory bedroom that we've set up for Jacob. Um, as you all know, Jacob is not the best sleeper. Um, <laughs> So we're trying our best to implement lots of different things that will enhance his sleep. We are going to change around his room so that it is sensory appropriate for him and will help him regulate himself to sleep. I'm sorry if I didn't do SPD justice in like explaining this video. I know for the typical person that hasn't heard about SPD, I hope I haven't confused you. How we're feeling about this diagnosis. Almost feel relieved knowing about this um, about Jacob because before we were just like, what is going on? Like he is screaming and crying so much, and we're just like, what is going on with him? Um, how can we help him? Now we're going to regular speech and OT, uh, speech therapy and occupational therapy, and it's definitely helping him a lot with finding things to regulate himself. Um, if you've never commented before, please comment down below. I'd love to know who my subscribers are, who's watching me every time I post a video. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in my next video.